Hey, good afternoon traders. Um, my name is Sifenge Ma from Quick Trade. Uh, today we are starting a little bit uh, late because then, uh, people haven't been uh, joining in. We are starting very late for that reason. Uh, let me check. Because, I mean, this is a class. I cannot start uh, the class without anyone. Uh, hi Odin, how are you? Uh, please type me a uh, message there at the bottom to indicate if you can hear me. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay, Oli. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You can hear me now. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> I've just moved you into the into into the room now. Uh, Odin, uh, is there anything that you understand about technical analysis, or this is your first maybe uh, lesson on technical analysis? Is there anything that you understand on technical analysis? Okay, uh, you're saying that you've done a, a course through Market Traders Institute, uh, which cover technical analysis, trade, etc. So you have some background. Oh, okay. But if you've done the course, uh, Odin, uh, sorry, am I pronouncing your name there correctly? If I say Odin, uh, is that how you pronounce it? And if you're saying that you have done some training, um, no, what, 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 what is your issue? Where is your issue currently? What are your issues currently when it comes to trading? Uh, well, are you are you not profitable? Have you tried maybe some trading strategies and they're not working? What's the issue? What's the issue there, Odin? Because I don't want to waste your time looking at things that are not really important to you. Oh, okay, Odin, you're looking for a proper software, okay. Check. Okay. Oh, you're looking for something that can okay uh okay their software is doing auto analysis okay okay um i understand but i mean what, what do you trade mostly do you trade um forex or you trade uh, stocks or shares jc shares you do forex yo okay <laughs> oh okay Odin. give me maybe one or two currency pairs that you want us to uh to start analyzing we'll have a look at them i'll show you maybe uh, the way that i do my analysis more especially for people that are starting out i'm going to treat you as if you are doing this for the first time if you understand you let me know and from then we'll take it from there give me maybe um one or two currency pairs that we can look at uh, the one that i have right now i have the gbpaud um i'm looking at it and it looks like it's it's about to, 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 to come off, but I mean, we, we will not do it. We'll do something else, something that you want us to do now.
Mm, you are very lucky. You are the only one in the trading room uh, today. I don't know what happened. I think maybe the email was never sent out. Uh, that's why <clears throat> we only have two people. Uh, I think it was only through the WhatsApp group. Okay, let's look at a cross pair. A cross pair with the USD GBP AUD moves quite a lot during the day. GBP AUD. Okay, we can have a look at it. GBP AUD. Okay, we can have a look at it. Oh, you got an email and it said twelve o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, not many people registered for this webinar. I don't know why. Not many people registered today. Okay, this is the GBP uh, AUD. Uh, let us get our. Let me start here. I want us to remove. <clears throat> Okay, Odin, I use the <clears throat> the ten simple moving average as my uh, as as my um, indicator here. It's a ten simple moving average. That's what I use. I'm sure you understand what that means. It's a, a ten simple moving average, and I, I think that you can add it uh, if you want to add one. Just go there, go to add indicator, and you go to SMA. You click OK. The period is ten and you move it up to 10 from there you go okay now i have two but i don't really need two i was just showing you yes that's the moving average that i use um i try very hard to simplify my uh, trading strategy uh, that is why i prefer using this um simple moving average i use it uh, with uh, naked charts i do not like really using um, a lot of indicators i just use it um uh, uh alone uh, without any other indicators so um this this is how i do it whenever i want it i look at the monthly time frame first if you do not know how to add the monthly time frame you go there where it says time you go there where it says time you go time and edit if you don't have the monthly you go to one of these boxes here uh the dotted boxes with the plus sign inside you go add then you say month if you want one month you say one month one month they apply apply when you come back you have now your one m one capital m that is your one month one month frame so that's the time frame that i use uh, every time uh, when i want to check whether to buy or sell the stock when the stock is above uh, when the stock or the currency pay is above you're moving sorry when the stock or the currency pair has closed the month above your simple moving average it means that that stock is likely to uh is likely to higher over the next uh, couple of months or weeks so i would uh, actually position myself for uh, some buys uh, if it closes below like it did here i would look to short the stock uh, like, uh, i cannot just short anywhere uh, but i mean that's it giving me an indication that that stock is about to sell off there's another stock that I'm going to show you, uh, EU, <clears throat> a Euro US dollar. Uh, we had a signal to, to, to sell, I think, last month, and uh, it had been coming down for, for a bit. Uh, we'll go check it. So uh, if you are below your moving average here, you know that you're about to um, sell off. And here we are above the moving average, and we haven't really closed uh, below the moving average yet. So we haven't closed below the moving average yet because i mean this bar hasn't finished forming uh it's always it's going to finish forming end of june at the moment it's still busy uh, forming so what i want us to do now i want us to change this from a uh, candles to a, a line chart that's what i want us to do from candles to a line chart i want us to mark these turning points uh to see where our support and resistance lies on this uh, on this currency on this currency pair, we are marking this area here. This is the turning point that I'm marking. I'm marking this area here at the bottom here. This one on the monthly chart using the line chart and here. Uh, 
I'll mark that one also. I'm marking this this one here. So we're trading uh, in this zone. So I expect the I expect the price to play around here, maybe uh, reverse uh, within that uh, same area. Looking at how uh, my moving average uh, looks there. This is another area that I'm going to mark, and there is another one that I'm going to mark also. I'm going to mark this point where I have my uh, my Kesa. Okay, so we've just put uh, three horizontal lines there, um, Odin. We've just put those three horizontal lines there. Uh, those are the levels I'm looking at that we should monitor. Uh, that we should monitor. Uh, you see, uh, around here, between uh, between these two lines, between these two, uh, let's call it maybe 1.75 and one point. Um, 1.75 and 1.73 that's where i really expect the price to uh, to pick up 1.73 and 1.75 that's where i expect the price to reverse maybe and start moving higher uh, in my view i think this is a buy zone on uh, gbp aud i think this is a buy zone between those two levels there i'm not looking at these lines below because i mean they're not really that important Now let's change our time frame from uh, monthly to daily because I mean that's where we're really going to uh, be trading now. <clears throat> uh, there's a little bit of resistance that we have here. Uh, that is why the price uh, has been uh, has been reversing. Uh, why it's been coming down. So I expect the price of uh, the GBP USD to come down to our uh, to our first line. Our first line is around. Uh, 1.74826 or you can just call it 1.75 and if it closes below 1.75 I think we can expect maybe the price to even come down to touch um excuse me I think uh, 1.73 uh, but I mean the main thing that we need to <clears throat> to check we need to check if the price is able to close below the moving average today if we are able to close below the moving up today, there's a good chance that there's going to be more selling momentum on this. But I mean, if it fails to do that, uh, well, I mean, we could see the price maybe reversing and moving higher. Another thing uh, that I see there, I see that there is a <clears throat> there is a trend line uh, that needs to be marked. I'll show you that trend line. There's a trend line that needs to be marked there. We have this trend line here, the the declining trend line there. We have uh, that declining trend line. So because of, you, you see, we, we produce this nice uh, bearish <coughs> uh, reversal pin around this area. Uh, this is a bearish reversal pin. Uh, the price went up and uh, sellers came in, pushed it down, and now we are testing this um, moving average. If we close below the moving average. We're coming down to that uh, 1.75 or 1.74826. A break below that area, uh, we are looking maybe at uh, trading very close to this 1.73 area. Uh, that's where I expect to see a lot of buyers coming in and uh, starting to buy again. <sighs> okay, uh, Odin, you have been trading. You know what trading is. Um, uh, is this what? you'd like to look at is um is this the kind of market that uh, so sorry is, is this the way that you, you, you analyze your markets uh, is, is there anything that you suggest that maybe we do Okay, I'll wait for you to finish typing your message there. Take your time, it's fine.
Oh, okay, okay. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that it seems like we're in a downtrend. Why would I consider going in for a long? Okay, let's go back to our, our monthly chart. If you look at the short term, uh, this short term uh, declining trend line that started uh, towards the end of uh, April, uh, we have been uh, going down, but let's check the monthly chart. <clears throat> let's go back to our monthly chart. From from uh, from uh, well, I mean, around the beginning of 2017, we went up, we came down. Obviously, this low is higher than this low here, and here we went up, we went uh, sideways for a bit here. We broke out of that area, we came down to our support, we came down to our spot. And another thing that you must um, keep an eye on is your moving average. We are trade above your moving average there on the monthly time frame. If you are above the moving average, it means that the price is likely to reverse at some point and start moving higher. So uh, that support that we have there, to me, it suggests that um, the buyers are going to come in and uh, push this market higher. Although if you check the daily, it had been uh, declining. Uh, those support levels are very important. Those support levels are suggesting to me that uh, buyers are likely to come in and push the stock higher very soon. So I think maybe this is our last uh, last leg down. After that, we're going to see the price rising. But at the moment, uh, there are people that are in uh, taking uh, some shots. But I'm saying that um, uh, you mustn't fool and think that this market is going to decline any further from here. I think if we don't get any disappointing news out of um, out of uh, Britain, there's a good chance that we are going to see the stock uh, bouncing off um, around this area here, or just uh, between maybe uh, 1.74 and 1.73. I think that's where we're going to get some buyers coming in and pushing the price up. So I expect the price maybe to have another leg up. Uh, first resistance is around uh, 1.79. Uh, first resistance around 1.79. From there, I'm expecting the price to move up to 1.84. Uh, that's my uh, that's my <clears throat> uh, that's my thinking behind this trade. I don't know if you agree with me on that one, um, Odin, or not. Uh, you're welcome to say no. I don't understand. I don't agree with you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, please hold for me just one second. Okay. Uh, so. That's, that's, that's how I look at it. Let's look at, um, so this area is our support. That's where I expect to see buyers coming in and uh, and buying. So even if you decide to wait uh, for price maybe to get here before you, I wouldn't really uh, blame you if you do that. Uh, let, let's look at the Euro US dollar. Let me show you the picture uh, I was referring to earlier. Euro US dollar. Let's check. Uh, let's check our our weekly. Uh, sorry, our monthly chart first. I have too many lines here. Please bear with me. Otherwise, I'll have to like remove them. I'll have to remove them. Uh, let me remove all these lines. I will put them back in again. Okay, uh, uh, in <clears throat> this is not very clear, uh, but I mean, if you check it, let me try and make it bigger. You see what happened here, Odin? Uh, we closed below the moving average. We closed at 1.199. That's where we closed. And our moving average, if you check at your top left corner, the moving average is 1.2. It's 1.2, so we closed below the moving average. That was in April. And beginning of uh, May, uh, we said, uh, was up to, was, we said to the guys, supposed to go in and look for uh, shorting opportunities on the euro US dollar, and uh, the market in in May dropped at 2.77 percent or 2.8 percent. Uh, the, the, that's um, that's how much it dropped, and uh, because of it, it was trading below the monthly uh, SMA. 
uh, it was trading below the monthly SMA. Uh, I understand it's below, but I mean, there is some support around here. Let us try and get these support levels using the line chart. We'll try and get these support levels using the line chart. This is our line chart. We want to try and mark those turning points. Uh, let's mark, we're marking this turning point here. We're marking the turning point. Uh, let's mark this turning point also. We're marking this one. This is the turning point we're trying to mark here. <clears throat> and uh, overhead resistance, we have some overhead resistance here. These are our overhead resistance. Overhead resistance is here. And uh, we have some Okay. Uh, we're supposed to be drawing another one here. Everywhere, everywhere on your chart where you see a dot, you must know that that area is a turning point. You can just put a horizontal line there if you are not using a dotted, uh, a dotted line, a dotted line chart. Okay, uh, we are trading currently um, <clears throat> uh, on the Euro US dollar. This is where we are on the daily chart. This is where we are on the daily chart. Uh, the day, uh, okay, sorry, I did not. Okay, on the monthly, on the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame, we are below, uh, we are below the moving average there. We are below. Uh, so that means that we should be selling the Euro against the US dollar. That should be our dominant uh the short is our dominant trend and right now uh, we are just above um the simple moving average on the daily which means uh, we are not trading uh, the euro us dollar we are not doing anything uh, if you are a short-term trader you should actually support we are supposed to be selling so we are supposed to be buying the euro and selling the us dollar uh, what we're waiting for we are waiting for the price to cross and close below the moving average on a daily chart like this you see where Makesa is uh, this is what we expect uh, the euro to do going forward if we can get a close below the simple moving average that's where we're going to go in and start selling the U the euro uh, us dollar otherwise we can use price action uh, this line that we got from our monthly time frame uh, is where our resistance is. Uh, you can see uh, we uh, here on the on the seventh we had uh, we had an attempt um, at this uh, horizontal line here resistance. Uh, the price tried to go beyond that. Sellers came in, they pushed the price up, and we were left with a, a, bull, a bearish uh, uh, reversal pin bar, and we had a negative day on the eighth. Uh, sell, sellers tried to push it lower, buyers came in, push it up, and uh, right now we have uh, something that looks like a, a, a bearish reversal bar forming again around the same area. So every time when it gets, uh, when the euro gets to 1.180, uh, every time when it gets to 1.18, uh, sellers come in and, and uh, push the price lower. So in my view, as long as we haven't had any daily close above uh, this horizontal line here, uh, 1.18, I think uh, sellers are going to be <coughs> uh, pushing the price down every time it gets to this area here. So uh, in my view, this is our sell zone. Uh, this is our sell zone. Our sell zone is between 1.186 and Okay, it's 1.186 and 1.180. Uh, between this zone here, I think this is where sell orders are located, waiting for the price to come to this zone so that they can push the market lower. Uh, I mean, uh, over the next couple of days, maybe we're going to see the price of um, the euro against the US dollar coming back down to this line here at the bottom. That's what I think is going to happen. I'm expecting the price to come down to 1.16 on uh, the US dollar. The price to come down to uh, 1.16. Uh, once the price hits 1.16, I think we're going to uh, maybe... Uh, okay, let me try and do this. Let me get more data. <clears throat> 
uh, 1.16. I think the price uh, may be pushed down to 1.146, uh, down to this point here, 1.146. Okay. This point here, 1.146. 1.146, I think, is our next support. Around that uh, 1.146, 1 uh, that's where I think buyers uh, on the euro US dollar can start uh, coming in to push the price up to the previous uh, resistance levels. Uh, Odin, I, <clears throat> does this make sense to you? Uh, is this how you analyze your market? Is this new? How do you analyze your market? Oh, okay. If you use FIBS mostly and they and they work, you can actually try using FIBS maybe uh, FIBS maybe together with. Oh, okay. No, that's perfect. That's perfect, um, Odin. Uh, so I think maybe what you can do there, you can use uh, these support and resistance levels uh, together with your FIBS. I think that you can actually do very well if you do that. Uh, I think that's what you really need to 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 to, to do there. Because I mean, relying on FIBS alone, I don't think that uh, that's a reliable way of uh, trading. But I mean, if you can get support and resistance levels, including your your trend lines on your on your charts, I think you can. <clears throat> I think you can do well. Uh, that's what that's, that's, that's what I use for my uh, for my for my uh, stop loss and take profit. I use my if I'm buying, I, I like using my support levels, and if I'm <clears throat> selling, I like using my resistance levels. And for, for 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 stop losses, I always like putting my stop loss out of outside of the zone, like here. Uh, let's use the euro. You see the euro. Uh, this is a. a Sell zone. This area here, I know that uh, <clears throat> it could actually uh, mess up your risk reward ratio. This is your sell zone, so I I cannot put my stop loss within this zone here. I'll try and put maybe my stop loss. Try and buy maybe very closer, very closer to this line here, 1.1.80. I would want to have my stop loss maybe somewhere here. I know that other guys can say, why don't you have your stop just above uh, this uh, tail here? You can have your stop loss uh, just above the tail here, but I mean it's it's within the zone, the sell zone. So I would prefer maybe putting my stop loss a little bit higher than that, so that maybe uh, when buyers try to come in, they cannot get my stop, or the stop loss uh, hunters uh, come in, they cannot get my stop loss there, uh, giving my stop, <clears throat> giving my uh, currency pay enough room to do whatever that it wants to do. So uh, I like using uh, those ranges. Uh, when picking my uh, my my stop levels, take profit is right down at this uh, support here. If I decide to go in here around one point up one point one eight zero, my take profit would be at um, uh, one point one six on on this one here on 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 the euro US dollar. Oh, okay, perfect, Odin. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming through. Uh, let's meet again maybe some other time. I think tomorrow we're going to have another one. Uh, we'll definitely have another one. If you have any questions and or stocks that you'd like us to um, have a look at, please drop me an email. Um, my email address is cisle at quicktrade.co.za. Let me uh, write it here. Quick trade. 
kio.za. That's my email address there at the bottom, uh, ctfkitrade.za. Uh, please send me your next opening invite. A pair we can work on. I really have some questions I'd like to share. Okay, no, that's perfect. Anytime. Uh, that's my email address, um, Odin. Uh, use it uh, anytime you have some questions or anything that you'd like to share with me. Okay, perfect, perfect. I will do that. Thank you so much, Odin. Cheers.